Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the new capabilities which was made into public preview, right? Uh, this is a new capability which was recently introduced by Microsoft, right? So this is for Exchange Online, as well as this is going to be a kind of protecting emails from many different factors, right? So I'm going to show you how we can enable this as well as uh, what are the different things that we can do what are the benefits of it? What are the different capabilities of this feature and how it can help us in making the domain safe and secure overall? Also, how it is going to help us to make sure our reputation and brand reputation is going to be also been not impacting if in case there are kind of spoof emails and spoof DMARC emails, all of that activities are something which are going to reduce or those reduces the brand reputation as well. And that is why we wanted to make this configuration on the tenant table. But currently it's in preview mode. So probably this is going to be tested thoroughly, all the different scenarios, all the different capabilities of it. And then once that is tested successfully, then it's going to be made available for the all the customers, right? But I'm going to show you how we can enable it and then what are the different things for it. But before making or before starting that, I would like you to like this video and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can also get to see new videos every time. All right, so let's get started. And let me share my screen and I'll just simply uh, walk you through the presentation first and then uh, we'll go through the topics or how we can enable it using PowerShell. All right, so this is the capability or feature which is reject direct sent, right? So whatever the emails are sent, right? All those emails would be rejected without domain validation, domain verification, right? So let's get started. Let me change the slides. All right. So before that, or before understanding why we wanted to enable it or what is a reject sent, right? So we need to understand why protecting your domain email is matter, right? Or why it matters, right? So whatever the applications or whatever the capabilities we are using, including devices, applications, third-party services, all those are sending emails using domain, right? And without any authentication, right? That means that can be used as a loophole to get into the systems and then users can be fall for it. Then it could be phishing attack or any other attack. It is not only specific, but it could be anything, right? And bad actors can simply spoof the domain, which leads the spamming and security risk as well as a reputational damage fall for whole organization as well as the brand reputation also damages. Right, so that is why this is also very important to know and understand why the email security is very important and why it matters, right? And that's why we have to take the appropriate steps to make sure it is going to be set up appropriately. And then we should also do all the capabilities or all the implementations that is going to protect the domain and whole organization from such actors and such bad activities, right? Right, so what's the challenge? Previously, admins had no easy way to block unauthenticated emails, right? Now we have the direct send option. And by using this one, we can simply enable it and which is going to make sure each and every email that is coming in and out, it's going to be verified, right? So that's going to be verified from the different layers, different factors in the backend system, including SPF, DMARC and DKIM records. Right. And all those records would also be validating whether this sender is associated with this respective domain and is validated or not. If it is found kind of suspicious or something like that, then it's going to be either taken actions basis on the filters, right? And then either it going it is going to be put into quarantine or maybe blocked and not delivered at all. Right. So all those activities would happen, right? And this this capability. When this capability was not there, this was keeping the organizations into the exposed 
to spoofing and unauthenticated or unauthorized mail flows, right? So whatever the emails are coming, all those are going through the EOP or just scan and those would be delivered because there was no domain level validation or verification. Now this capability is going to do all of that capabilities or all of that scanning and validation and then only it's going to deliver the emails, right? Next, now the question is what is direct send or what is a reject direct send in Exchange Online? Right? So direct send allows unauthenticated emails from devices, applications using our domain or any domain that is configured within the Exchange and for different. Uh, all right, I think there was disconnection. Let me share the screen again. All right, so. I was talking more on to this, uh, what is direct send in Exchange Online, right? So this is going to allow us to unauthenticated emails from the devices, which is going to do all the authentication and every verification, right? And we don't need to do any another layer of configurations, but definitely we have some of the configurations to make on a domain level. And you can see that which does not need or no login or authentication needed also mimics the incoming internet emails right and then relies on spf dmark or dkim records right all those are going to be needed as well but this is going to be a capability to whether we should be uh, enabling it on a domain level and how we wanted to target all of that one incoming and outgoing communication on mail flows right All right, so this is the feature which is reject direct send, right? So this is the new feature which is in public preview which blocks anonymous emails from your domain, right? That means if the domain is not verified, authenticated, then it's going to simply be blocked. And that is why this feature is going to make sure that we need to make sure whatever the communication happening and is being validated with the respective domain and then only it's going to allow that communication to happen, right? So it needs authenticated as well as connector verified verified email. Those are allowed to send in and out across the tenant and it is going to simply allow it to send it both from both sides, right? So what are the benefits for it, right? So benefits includes it stops the spooked as well as unauthorized emails, whatever is coming from outside the market or outside the internet, right? Or outside the organization. And then it is going to stop that because if there is no validation appropriately, then there is no delivery as well, right? So as soon as it validates the domain and maybe anyone can spoof the domain or identity, right? And then try to send an email from any other identity, right? Because Bad actors are going to send from any identity. That means it's going to be simply uh, kind of spoofing and then send it and uh, mimicking that someone is from the organization is trying to reach out or do certain actions, this and that and that, right? And that is why we have to do this to protect the domain and reputation. Next is it is going to secure the mail flow as well because or whatever the emails are coming in and out, all those emails would be validated and then only those would be delivered once those are authenticated and validated. Otherwise, that or those emails or communication is not going to happen at all, which provides better control over the mailbox traffic, right? So what it means is that whatever the traffic is coming in and out, only the legitimate emails would be delivered to user's mailbox and not the false or fishy or spamming kind of emails would not be delivered at all. That is why it's going to be kind of easy way for that as well. Right, so now how we can enable this, right? So here are the commandlets and to connect with, we need to connect it to Exchange Online using PowerShell, right? And once we connect, we have the command which is set dash organization config, then reject direct send is equal to true or is true. Once we do that, this is going to enable it that feature and by default, this feature is turned off or set to false, right? And once we turn it on or turn it 
or set it to true. That means it's going to apply to the whole organization and it takes around 30 minutes for whole organizations to configure and enable it, right? So as soon as you enable it, it's going to be distributed across the tenant within 30 minutes and it's going to be up and running for the whole domain, right? And what happens if unauthorized emails are sent, right? So that's another question, right? If there is an any domain or any email which was sent and this feature was turned on and those emails are sent, but what happens to that or those emails, right? So those emails would be foiled, filled with the return this error, right? So this is going to be the error which says, tenant inbound attribution, direct sent not allowed for this organization from unauthorized sources, right? So what does this mean is that it's going to validate on the domain level. And once the domain has verified that, okay, this domain is perfect and is correct one, then only allow the emails to be delivered. Otherwise, that email should be rejected from the edge of the connections or edge of the connection filters, right? It is not going to be going through all the uh, deliverables or, um, or it is not going to hit the user's mailbox, right, at all. And this is going to send out that email notification saying that respective sender, this is not allowed with this specific error, right? So this is also very important to know and understand. Next, what are the important things to know, right? So it says legitimate senders must use partner connectors if in case we have something to make the business with or we have partnership with the different organizations or businesses then we can make partner connectors and build that connection as well and the communication should also work next is external forwarding without srs may get blocked right so srs is going to be also be blocked if in case there is no legitimate flows or legitimate connectivity between both of those domains right and then we should also review the mail flows before making sure or enabling this capability across the organization. For what? It is for all the different applications or systems which are sending in emails, for example, SMTP relays and all those kind of applications are sending emails, be it internally or externally. Then we have to make sure all those are set up correctly, appropriately as well, so that mail flow is not going to be impacted at all. And we have to take that action beforehand as well. Right? So now the final thoughts around it. So we can start with testing first by making sure this feature is going to be enabled. And then we can start with auditing senders, then set up the partner connectors for the partners and vendors and all those organizations which are doing business and working with our organization. And let, then we can prepare for the full rollout across the organization, right? So. It is going to also help us to protect the brand and the whole email environment along with the brand reputation as well, right? So yeah, that is how we can go ahead and do that and we can enable it. Now I'll show you how we can run this PowerShell command. So let's go back to that commandlet. Okay, so here's the commandlet and I will simply just end the presentation or presentation mode and let's jump on to the parcel right so here we are i'm already connected to exchange online so i'll simply uh, run those commands one by one but before running this first command i would show you whether this feature is enabled or not right so this is the command where we can run it and check whether this feature is enabled for the tenant or not, right? So once we run it, you can see that which is direct or reject direct send is set to false, right? And we need to make it to true, right? And that is when it's going to be enabled for whole organization, right? So for now, let's go ahead and run this command. So this command let is going to be run and this is going to set this direct or reject direct send feature for the whole tenant. It's not specific to any uh, service or something like that, but this is going to be setting for whole organization at all, right? 
So let's go ahead and run this one. Now you can see that it's going to run and you can see it has completed that one. So now let's run the get organization. You can see that the result is set to true, right? So that means this command remains false by default. And once we are ready or once we analyze everything, including mail flows and partner connectors and all the connectors and everything together, right? Then we are, or we should be good to go ahead and turn it on by running this command here, right? So once it is turned on or set it to true, you can see that it is going to be set to true so that it's going to be activated for the whole tenant. And from the time it is set to true, it is going to take around 30 minutes to make that change happen for the whole tenant, right? So yeah, this way it is going to be set to turn on or set to true and it's going to protecting the whole domain validation and is going to check everything together, right? So yeah, that's all for this video I wanted to show you and talk about. Also, don't forget to like this video and share this video with your friends, colleagues, people around you so that they can also learn and subscribe to the channel, right? So that's something which you get every new video and you can see and you can learn definitely on different videos as well. Yep, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.